there, there's, a, there's a more superficial political pattern that I think has driven some of the politics of the behavior of uh, people like these people in Florida that don't say gay bill. And that is, when all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a culture war. So you, you, you got a political faction that really doesn't have a lot of answers for many of the questions that people are wrestling with. They love talking about gas prices, but they don't have an answer on gas prices. They don't have an answer on inflation. Many of them answered uh, our call for bipartisan infrastructure uh, work with a no. Um, haven't seen an answer on what to do about the price of prescription drugs. They voted against lowering that. Don't have an answer on what to do about the cost of childcare. Um, don't have a great answer on taxes. Actually want to raise taxes for the poor. That's a new one. I, I thought I'd seen it all. Um, <laughs> then I saw Senator Scott's proposal to raise taxes for the poor. Um, that's not great territory for them to be debating on. So what do they do? They find somebody vulnerable and pick on them, which at the moment is largely the trans community. And they find something to talk about, which can go between the laughable, like is Donald Duck going to make your kid gay, to the incredibly dark, which is the suggestion that the very presence of someone who is gender non-conforming or trans or, or gay or lesbian or otherwise different, the very existence of somebody like that is an adult subject, right? That, that, that if, if, if my kids in, let's say, a first grade classroom were to mention in passing that over the weekend they had, the, they had a great time going to, with, with their dads to the zoo, that they would have somehow, by saying that, uttered something age inappropriate and get us really fired up about that fight.